Good information is sometimes a two-edged sword for those that obtain it. On one hand, doing good comes normal and natural. Yet on the other hand, weight from those that have it, or the presumption of what is to be expected, is the struggle that can ensue. Misinformation is sometimes used in resistance when facts are easy to confuse, blurring the lines to cross. In the pages of Keeping Abreast by Dr. Khaled Mumud, there is a sincere belief that there isn't enough being done to help the victims of breast cancer, but instead an obsession to find a way to beat the disease with treatments and medication, no matter what the cost. One is left with the sense that the Hippocratic Oath that every doctor has to take is merely a gesture or formality asked to partake in, rather than an expectation to safeguard fellow beings. The manic search for a cure is of little solace to the patients that die every year. They are replaced by new ones to take part in ever-improving ways to help cure breast cancer. Meanwhile, the discovered cure, i.e. the prevention of breast cancer, made by the complex of many studies conducted for breast cancer and cancers, has been widely ignored. Dr. Mahmoud has taken his oath seriously, perhaps like many other doctors do, but he is in a unique position to write this book and share his goodwill against all odds and pretense. He does not pursue any culprits and writes little on it, devoting the book to good, hard medical information written for the people. He writes on hidden treasures and important studies that are not well publicized, always being very clear, like few doctors can be. The book is so informative and simple, it's brilliant. Show on FM 107.1. On the 22nd of the month, we do talk about breast cancer because it is something that every woman faces, and there's an awfully lot that we think about about finding a cure. We talk an awfully lot about detection and the importance of early detection, but you know, Preventing breast cancer is pretty darn important as well. And I have an expert on that with me. It's Dr. Khalid Mahmoud. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Dr. Mahmoud has worked in the field of oncology for more than 25 years. Uh, he's board certified. And he has a book out called Keeping Abreast, Ways to Prevent Breast Cancer. And you believe that breast cancer is preventable. Is that true? Absolutely. I think most of breast cancer is preventable, but uh, unfortunately, uh, it is not talked about much. Uh, yes, we have a lot of interest in curing breast cancer, as you know of. There, there are a lot of groups and a lot of marches and mm -hmm. run for the mm -hmm. cure, but there's not much for prevention. Now, uh, doctors, uh, Dr. Mahmoud's book called Keeping a Breast Ways to Prevent Breast Cancer uh, is uh, thorough and uh, it, it has many details about this. But can you give us some of the high points? Because I think uh, that just uh, to get a few of these points that might inspire people to, to seek out your book to learn more, but also to make some changes, perhaps, because believe me, people, you, you want to avoid getting this if at all possible. What are some things people can do to prevent breast cancer? Okay. Uh... You have questions for Tony K, that's me, or our guest this hour, Dr. Khalid Mahmoud. You can send them to dj at artistfirst.com. Dr. Mahmoud has written a fascinating book, Keeping a Breast. He is a certified practicing oncologist. And let's give a warm perceptive marketing our guest. Welcome to our guest. How do you do? I do. I'm, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us from the great state of Minnesota. Thank you. It's not very cold here. As a matter of fact, it was 74 degrees here today. Oh, how lovely for a November of 2008. Uh, doctor, you've been practicing oncology for uh, quite a number of years. How did you... And diet is just one of the areas that's addressed in our next guest's book, Keeping Her Breast Ways to Prevent Breast Cancer. Dr. Kala Mahmoud, former chief of medicine at North Memorial Medical Center in Minneapolis and now specializing in preventative and anti-aging medicine, joins us. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Let's talk about diet. One of the first things you said when we were doing that first story about cutting the trans fats here locally, you said that's going to actually have a, a direct result Definitely. in bioidenticals. They are out there, and bioidenticals are, are natural forms of estrogen and, and progesterone. progesterone. Now those are, but they're, sometimes doctors aren't giving those. Uh, most doctors don't know about those. Okay. Most doctors also don't know how to give those. I think it's not something that you can blindly start giving. Mm -hmm. I think
thing you got to administer those in the most natural ways and also measure the levels as you go along. See, the beauty of bioidenticals is this, that if I want to measure your estrogen and progesterone, I don't have to change anything. The bioidentical will measure mm. in your blood level as a natural estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. See, so I can, uh, you can, I can measure and mm -hmm. I can change the dose and I can tell you how to adjust it. Mm -hmm. And that's done through a blood test. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We well, we hear about new research on breast cancer almost every week. Now a local doctor is putting all the vital information about the disease into one book. After the all right, thank you, Keith. Uh, stats on breast cancer are alarming. One in eight women is diagnosed with a disease, and it is the sixth leading killer of women in America. We hear a lot of information on how to prevent it from many different sources. Well, now one local doctor has put it all in one book. And it is Dr. Khalid Mahmoud's book. It's called Keeping Abreast, Ways to Prevent Breast Cancer. And Dr. Mahmoud joins us now. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. All right, let's talk about how we can reduce the odds on getting bre breast cancer with uh, just basic changes to our lifestyle. What would you say, what would you put at the top of that list? I'm glad you asked this question because there's a great deal of confusion about estrogen and progesterone. You see, uh, the people or women in this country for the last 30 years have received so-called estrogen and progesterone, which is not really estrogen and progesterone. Even if their experts say that it is the same thing as in your body, it isn't. These are artificial compounds that are chemically different from what exists in your body. And, and those are the things that, through several different mechanisms, increase the rate of heart attack, strokes, as well as breast cancer. Now, if you're talking about your real hormones in your body, there's a way to give those hormones. Those are the bioidentical hormones, and if those are given right, you can actually reduce or extremely eliminate any risk of cancer from those. Uh, and those are, seem to be controversial as well. Uh, you know, one thing that, that, that I learned in, in talking to you was that as women uh, become menopausal, that they have more estrogen in their breasts, and that is what causes the chances of breast cancer. Exactly. You see, when the ovaries stop making estrogen, your fatty tissue makes estrogen. And you got a lot of fatty tissue in the breast that makes a lot of estrogen. So if you look at the concentration of estrogen in your breast as a menopausal woman, it'll be 10 to 50 times higher than what's in the blood. Now, if you give that woman some estrogen that is natural estrogen, that will actually reduce the amount of estrogen that you will be forming in your breast. So there's many studies that have now come out. At least I have five studies in my book that show that these women do not, if you give them estrogen, natural estrogen, they don't have any increased risk. On the other hand, they have decreased risk of breast cancer if they take that estrogen. Same thing about progesterone. Natural progesterone protects you against cancer of the breast. But it, the artificial progesterone actually causes that. Okay. Um, and, and women who are more susceptible to PMS at certain times of their life, you said they are also more likely. They, they are more likely because, chance. because they've got imbalance of estrogen and progesterone. They have a lot of estrogen, but they are not making enough progesterone. Progesterone is the thing that protects you against it. Okay, well, really good information, and uh, you can find it all in this book, uh, Dr. Mamu's. It's called Keeping Abreast, and you'll be appearing at the Healthy Life Expo on Friday at 2 p.m. at the Minneapolis Convention Center. If you like